Hello guys, my name is SVB and I'm back with another video and today I want to share with you some thoughts I had recently while streaming or more accurately while my FPS quality got so bad that I couldn't play Overwatch. During the stream I got to chatting in a sort of AMA session and my followers and I started talking about how more types of tanks might make more people inclined to play the role which led us to theory crafting new heroes and what abilities would make Overwatch more fun to play. So here's that part of the stream where we come up with some crazy ideas for fun concepts that we'd like to see introduced and I also go into detail about a specific type of ability that I wish more Overwatch heroes had which is something we can actually borrow from MOBA games like Dota. If you want to watch this full discussion where we talk everything from 3 to 1 to my thoughts on Project A to why so few people play tank then head on down to Twitch and do consider giving me a follow. Same goes for Twitter and Patreon and all that stuff and you guys know the drill by now. Like, follow, drop generic comments to help the algorithm but without any more delay let's get to it guys. There's just not that much option if you if you wanted to main tank. There's like there's like as many main tank heroes as there's hit scan heroes and that's a problem right there that one niche of DPS is as represented as arguably the most important role in Overwatch. And I think that's one, if there were more tank playstyles, there would be more ways for people to get into it. Like obviously Hammond isn't the best tank you want to see your tank lock into. But if, if a lot of people were playing Hammond, at least that's better than no one playing tank at all. And if there were more tanks that were a little bit more different, because I think for the reasons we discussed just now, people don't like tanking that involves just shielding and doing unrewarding things for the sake of your team like i like it i enjoy it but not everybody does so i get that i don't think adding another three tanks right now would make people play more tank maybe for two weeks but then it's going back to normal adding characters does not mend the downsides brackets no feedback unclear role definition hard to get into on the other hand making tanks more accessible brackets more dpsy will lead to a loss of the tank identity kind of Potentially, yes and no. Yes and no. I mean, I think, for example, the support. if we look at a support role, for example, it's thrived by the addition of characters like Ana and Baptiste. Like, there's supports for everyone. There's your Mercies and your Moiras and arguably your Brigittas as well for people who don't come from an FPS background. And then you have your Baptiste and Anas and even Zenyatas who are for players who like the skill aspect they like the shooting aspect and they like the high skill high reward that comes with it and i don't think anyone sitting here would say that ana was a bad addition to the game batiste yes had his problems with immortality but he was still a great boost for the game and it makes playing support fun like if you listen to any of the pro pro supports or just tier two semi-professional supports as well they hate being forced on a brig jail, they love being given the freedom to play Ana and Batiste because it makes the game more fun and more engaging for people who have those other skill sets. Like if you if you just want to play Mercy, that's fine, of course you can. But it it would be nice to have that other option for people who have those other skill sets, which is the same idea that we're going back to with tanking, where Sigma, for example, is a very fun tank and does offer something for people who have a different set of skills. But obviously he was a little bit too strong and so he had to be tweaked. So I don't think that, I don't necessarily think that adding more F, like FPSE tanks would be a bad thing. It's just about balancing how they do it. Because obviously Roadhog is kind of an FPSE tank, but he just doesn't actually do much tanking. So there's not much point. He may as well just be a DPS. If there were more mechanics like Ana is a sniper, but her sniper gun heals. So that is an interesting way of turning an FPS character into a healer. So something like that for a tank could be interesting. Maybe the tank shoots stuff that blocks things. Maybe in in the same vein that like the more damage Brigitte does, the more healing she does. We, there could be some mechanic of almost like a Doomfist. I'm just spitballing here, guys. So if I throw out a terrible idea, don't panic. But if it's like a Doomfist tank version where the more damage Doomfist does, the more shields he generates. So what about a tank? The more damage the tank does the more shields they generate for them and their team. Or if they're controlling a certain area, they get more things for their team. You know, if they're stood in a certain spot, X distance away from their teammates, they get X amount of protection for their team. Let me update this because now we're going we're gonna to move on to, let's theory craft some heroes because we've seen some interesting ideas. But what do we think about what kinds of things we want to see in the game? Because what we're talking about here now, 
with these kind of tanks that are FPS-y tanks. We're talking about things to add to the game that would make them fun. What if you had a tank who tanked by lowering the damage of heroes he shoots, he, he slash she shoots or hits? I like the idea. I mean, I, I can see that War Boss Lincoln says that that feels too much like DM, which is a fair concern. But it would be interesting to have more like... Again, I'm a, I'm a fan of MOBAs. I haven't played MOBAs in years, but I grew up playing MOBAs. And I like the concepts in MOBAs because they add a lot and lot of plays and counterplays. And that's what you want in Overwatch. That's what Overwatch is supposed to be about. It was supposed to be about picking and counterpicking and X hero does this, so X hero does that. So the idea of having a hero essentially would be the opposite of a Discord orb. Right? If you think about what a Discord orb does, a Discord orb increases the amount of damage an enemy takes. Now, you could have a tank or a support who does the opposite and either reduces the amount of damage a hero ally takes, which could be an interesting mechanic, or reduces the amount of damage that's being done. And it, could, it doesn't have to be that they do it all the time. It could be an ability, for example. It could be something like you shoot it out and in a small radius... It, it reduces a damage, you know, it does a little bit of damage reduction. I think Overwatch could use a healer that has a friendly pull ability, but there's always the topic of griefing. This is something I wanted to talk about for a long time. I think 100% Overwatch needs more abilities like that. I'll give an example. So Roadhog, for example, by his, by his design, is based on a hero from Dota called Pudge. And he had an ability where he shoots a hook out in a straight line, and the range increases as you level up the character. And the first target it hits connects and gets pulled back. So that could be an enemy hero. It could be an ally hero. It could be a creep. So a creep is like the random stuff that runs around in MOBAs while the heroes fight. And so the ability's use and its value varies entirely on its execution and the creative thinking of the player. So you saw Pudges making huge plays of like they would either you know there were there are different tactics with it so what you could do is you could stand at an off angle because obviously if you try to do it in the middle of everything you're going to hook the first thing in your face and that's bad so you'd see pudges stand at like an off angle and they'd wait to find an opportunity and from the fog of war they would throw a hook out catch an enemy hero and then drag them into their team essentially the same way a roadhog hook works is almost an insta kill but you could also have a pudge pulling their teammate out of danger. So their teammate is maybe, you know, has gone too far, they're overextended. Hook, get over here, you're safe now. And I think that is an amazing element to have in a game because that could just as easily be completely whiffed and completely wasted where you throw a hook and you just hit a creep that walked in front of you because you were dumb and you didn't plan it properly. So I think that aspect would be great in Overwatch. Like the only aspect like that I can think of is a May wall right now in Overwatch where it can affect allies as well as enemies and a good wall wins you a fight and a bad wall could F your, F your allies up. And I think that would be cool. So I think obviously I can understand why they didn't do that for Roadhog who is Pudge because it could be hard to do that in in Overwatch. But I do think they, if they had done it, people would have adapted and I think it would be a fun mechanic. Warboss Lincoln says, honestly, if you have an ability that pulls allies and want to prevent griefing, you could include an option to turn it off. No, no, no. So the, so the argument of grief, stopping griefing, I don't agree with it. Because if you continue to grief like that, you just get banned and avoided all the time anyway. It's like people will just report you. It's the same as a Maywall. There's a danger when you think about abilities like this is to think that, oh, the, the think immediate worst case scenario, how are people going to abuse it? In reality, people don't abuse the Maywall, right? Like how many games are you in where someone Maywalls you off for, for just for the fun of it? Yes, when they're walking through spawn, they'll do it. But does anyone ever do it deliberately in a game? So I don't think that's a fear. I don't think we have to worry about that. I would like to see those kind of abilities in game. I think I'll, show, I'll tell you another example that is fun. There's another character in Dota called Tiny. And what Tiny can do is he has an ability called Toss, which as the name suggests, he literally tosses something. So he tosses the nearest target to him a certain distance. So it's like it's similar to when you when you want to drop a Maywall, you press the button and a little highlight indicator comes up. Or a gravitic flux is a great example. So you pop gravitic flux and a little circle comes up that you have to aim. Essentially it's like that where you press the toss button and you'll get a little uh, 
little highlight bar, and then you decide where you want to throw them. Similar to the hook from Pudge, it has potentially huge value, has potentially no value. Where, because Tiny is actually a tanky hero, what you can do is you can have the Tiny run up to one of their teammates who's gotten in trouble and just toss them away. Like, get out of here, get, get to safety. Alternatively, you can use, because the, the move toss does damage upon impact, so just to just to clarify that it's not like it's not going to kill your ally. It does like 50 damage to whoever it tosses and 300 damage to enemies in the impact radius. So the one use is just to toss a creep at the enemies and it does 300 damage when it lands. And then another creative use, and this is where you start to develop really great strategies, is that there's an item in Dota 2 called a blink dagger. And the blink dagger allows you to blink similar to what tracers blink is so it just teleports you a short distance instantly so what you would see people do is they'll blink with tiny straight on top of the enemy and then toss them back towards their own team now because like i said tank he's a tiny character he can go in do that and still come out so again rewarding creativity amongst players is, is huge and makes the game amazing it makes it so fun when someone pulls off one of those plays successfully there's no more satisfying feeling than just like pulling off a high value play like that, like with the Pudge where you save your allies or where you blink in this tiny and you you know you toss one of your allies to safety and then you fight while the rest of your team is helping you and that one ally is going back to get healed or whatever. I feel like anti-tank heroes like Mei Sombra need to get reworked to make more t tanking more fun. Yeah, it could be interesting. Again, it's, it is good to have abilities like hack in the game because it's a fun mechanic it's a silence and silences are again a huge part of mobas and like, there's so many interesting abilities in moba so for example there's a hero in dota again called silencer who as the name suggests is all about silences and he has like three abilities that can silence so he's very strong he does quite often get banned when people are playing in, in, in professional level and they're playing in the ban phase so he has one ability which silences you if you don't use a spell so it's a good way of forcing someone to use a cooldown. That could be an interesting mechanic in Overwatch, right? Like imagine an ability that's like, if you don't use an ability in the next five seconds, something will happen to you. That's interesting. That's fun now because you might get someone to burn an important cooldown. Like if you use that, let's say, in double, double shield meta, you have Arisa who's spamming her shield and her halt, and you want to force her fortify you could wait till she uses a shield and a halt, and then you throw that ability on her, and now in the next two, three seconds, she has to use an ability, or she'll be silenced for 10 seconds, or she'll have damage taken upon her. Now she has to spam her fortify, and now, you, you, now you've taken out an important cooldown, now you can push. Same for a May wall in this meta. Let's say the May, I mean, she doesn't have to use Ice Block. You could use that ability and force her to use Ice Block, and now she doesn't have that get out of jail free card that she usually has when she's you know, low on HP, but maybe she's used Ice Block and now you use that ability on her. So in the next three seconds, she has to use her wall, which forces her to use it at an inconvenient time. And then you push. I think they should add more of things that only one character can do, like speed, wall, anti-heal. This would stop must picks in a meta and add diversity. It would also allow for bans to be a thing. I half agree with you, but actually AK, I think it's the, the opposite of what you're saying should be true. We need heroes that overlap a little bit so that people don't have to mirror each other all the time. I think about it this way. If there was another hero like Mei who walled people off but did more damage, essentially, for example, right? You might be inclined to pick Mei in the current to pick that hero in the current meta. Because right now the what happens is one Mei puts a wall up and tries to isolate the enemy Ryan, and then the other may has to respond by putting another wall up to block. And that's essentially the meta right now. And that's why you have to mirror May, because one wall can only be countered by another wall. There's just no easy answer otherwise. Now, if you had a hero who could also wall, but also do some other utility or do a lot of damage, like hypothetically let's say this hero could also do it to an ananade there may walls now you wall when the walls go down you chuck an anti-nade in now you've got another source of value whereas the enemy may is trying to get value by freezing so now you're now you've got the similar i like they're fulfilling a similar role 
except you've got the potential for uniqueness and the potential to put your own spin on an idea. So rather than everybody trying to play the wall meta and then freeze, you have one team who's trying to do the wall meta and freeze and one team who's trying to do wall meta but anti-nade afterwards and go that way. So, or it could be a wall, a sniper who walls, right? Like someone who sat on a high ground and as they're looking down from their perch, they can drop a wall really far away and then continue to snipe. So now rather than everybody playing a brawl comp, you have one side that's playing the May version with the brawl and trying to get short range. And then the other other philosophical idea is I'm going to sit here. My team is going to keep range from your teams. And every time you try to come forward, I'm going to wall. And then I'm going to continue to snipe you. So that's that's why I think you need overlap. And then eventually you don't, then you could have a pick and ban or then you could have a, then you could have Overwatch where mirroring isn't allowed because there's enough ways of countering a certain ability. Right now, there's no way to really counter a Maywall other than a Maywall. And that's the problem. Speed is so important in the game and it's all that only Lucio can do it. There has to be a way of replicating that effect with a different ability. I just had a random thought. What about like a speed bomb? Like an Ana nade, but you drop it and everybody in that area gets a speed boost. Like it almost sounds like a power up out of Mario Kart. Just a random idea that popped in my head. But I'm sure there's many ways to replicate a speed boost. That would be interesting and engaging. You could have other kinds of abilities that alter map ge geometry, not just walls. Maybe a staircase to get people to high ground other than just TP. That's an interesting idea. I like that idea. A staircase. Like a ramp. Okay, now I'm, now I'm literally am thinking Mario Kart because I was just in my head. I saw a little image of like putting a ramp up and then as they run it, they gain, like as your allies run, they gain speed and they can even like jump off literally like they're driving a car. But just a ramp itself could be like a very interesting utility ability, right? In a way that a Maywall is. But if that's the only ability another hero, ha like a new hero has, it could make them a great pick on maps where there's heavy choke points. It would be fun to see a hero that can make a passage through walls. It would counter away, but would also make ways to pass through chokes. It would be fun to have that kind of support as a flank DPS. That could be interesting. So like almost like a portal gun, right? Like, you know, in the game Portal where you shoot a little portal out of the wall and then like a hole opens up in the wall almost. Except it would just be a literal hole for let's say a couple seconds. That could be super OP though, but it would be super fun to watch, I swear to God. Like, can you imagine the unexpected places people would come from? It's just like suddenly a hole opens up in the wall and people are flooding through from this direction that you never thought they would. Of course, you are forcing yourself into a new... You're making yourself a new choke point because let's say you open a hole in the wall and it's not going to be that big. You all have to get through really quickly. If, uh, if the enemy team responds in time, they're just going to F you up. Um, pass through walls would make Paris fun. Would make Paris... Like that would be a good map for it. Like that, you know that um, building which wall climbers can go over. Opening up a hole in there would be great. They should just do that with the map anyways. But that could be cool. Blue turtle shell when come on blizzard when someone's got that would be hilarious it's like can you imagine an, an ability that targets the enemy person with the highest alt charge that would be funny to see just for the lols what about a tank that gets bigger the more active damage they do till they reach max size that's very tiny inspired in a way tiny has a similar mechanic from dota where the guy the toss guy where his ultimate just increases his size which, which also increases his damage could be interesting the more I guess the uh, physically bigger is a form of tanking. Could be interesting if, like, if, if there's there's a few now charge mechanics in Overwatch. So, I don't mean Reinhardt charge. I mean like Symmetra charge and Zarya charge, where Symmetra holds her holds a beam on the shield, and the longer she holds it, the more charge she gets for her damage. Could be interesting to have. Uh, an, a, a tank charge up the size of their shield. That could be interesting, where if it's like a Reinhardt, the more swinging he does, the bigger and bigger and bigger his shield gets. Obviously, you put a limit on it, but that could be interesting. A champion that can make your allies fly. They again, that, that depends on the precise details, because that could be very OP, very fast. Like think how how tough it is to deal with Farah, and she's just one character that flies, particularly with a Mercy. Now think of 
six enemies flying and you can't and you have a hit scan player who's like please help me they've got six people in the air i can't shoot any of them so we need jetpack cat to bring balance jetpack cat the prophecy did tell the jetpack cat jetpack cat would come and bring balance balance to the force okay neo jimmy says count me in how about a sniper tank he hits you you get shields that could be interesting, except they would have to be an off tank. Because if a tank is a sniper, like a tank by definition has to be taking damage for other people. So it would be difficult to tell other people. Like it's already hard enough, as we were discussing earlier, if you're like a Zarya getting your team to go forwards. So if you were a sniper tank in the back line, your team would have to trust you so much to hit your shots that they would go forwards in the knowledge that you will hit them, which is just not going to happen. But that would be an interesting off tank. That would be a very interesting off tank who maybe can sit farther to, from their main tank than usual, but maybe in the way that Ana does, can provide shielding and protection for their teammates. For every strength, there needs to be an equal weakness. Zarya when bubbled, invincible. Zarya no bubble, so vulnerable. So whatever you think would be fun, it has to have some sort of cost, else it's OP. That is a very that is a very true point, Iron Brew. And that's something that I think is the reason the power creep has been a bit of an issue in the game. Is that Blizzard have ignored that a little bit with some of their newer heroes. Where take someone like Sigma, for example. He has a, or particularly Sigma on release. He has a shield that's as strong as most other tanks' shields. It can be placed at any angle at a moment's notice. Then he has a self-eat, which is essentially a defense matrix, which at the time blocked even Roadhog hooks. And then he has a CC as well, and an ultimate that's as good as a Graviton Sir. So he literally had everything that every other tank has in himself, with no downside. Whereas I think the initial heroes that Blizzard made were very good for this same reason. They had, like if you think about Charge, for example, great ability, but it can... It can one-shot people, but it could also lead you to throw and get yourself killed. Shield, Reinhardt's shield. He can't uh, damage while he's shielding. And he has to put his shield down to even fire strike, which then allow, which then maybe met, gets him killed. So these mechanics are great. Zari Bubble is another great mechanic. Even Winston, it's like, he has this great mobility, but his bubble is, uh, but he's very weak. And his bubble is on a fairly long cooldown and it's quite easy to break. Diablo Paladin type tanks have, or as they could say, heal, thorns, or DM. That would be interesting, actually. A tank that switches auras, kind of like Lucio switches uh, healing aura and speed boost. That would be interesting, actually. I would like to see that where, because that's dynamic, right? I think the one danger of having a tank with just an aura that's always on is that it's unengaging, kind of like Brigitte. It's, you know, you just kind of swing and you're healing people. But a tank that has to shift auras and cycle auras could be very interesting and very high skilled as well. Because it would take great balance to switch between, let's say, an aura that does... There could be an aura that increases your team's damage, increases the... reduces damage that the, your team takes. Or a third option, which... Or like, you know, like a thorn aura where each damage you take reflects onto the enemy a little bit. So, that could be interesting. And that's all I got for today guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you liked some of the concepts discussed. And if you yourself thought of any cool ideas while you were watching, or you've just got one that's been burning a hole in your pocket for all this time, then do drop it in the comments below. As always, I want to give a big shout out to my Twitch subs and my patrons, and in particular, my newest GM level patron, Raminder. Thank you guys for your support. But that's it from me, I'll be back before you know it with another video, see you guys soon.